We are doing radical and rational exponent equations. Um, so with, we're going to start with radical equations. Okay, and when you are doing work with radical equations, um, the first thing that you need to make sure that you do is you need to isolate the radical. Do you know what that means? If you took Algebra 1 from me, you would absolutely know, but none of you took Algebra 1 from me. By itself, right? Isolate. I use it over and over and over again because it's always the thing that people forget to do, okay? So you're probably going to hear me say it a million times today. Isolate the radical. Get the radical by itself before you try to do like the actual solving of the problem, okay? So isolate, isolate, isolate. And then your second step is you square both sides. Okay, so those are your two steps in solving these and we are just gonna jump right in and solve a few. So first type of problem, um, Here's our first one. 2 plus the square root of 3x minus 2 equals 6. Okay, so we said first thing you need to do is isolate the radical. Is the radical isolated here? No. It means we need to get the radical by itself. So what do we need to get rid of? The 2. So right now we're saying 2 plus that radical. So we want to take that 2 away. So subtract, and we're left with rad 3x minus 2 equals 4, okay? Is our radical isolated? Yeah. Yes, it is by itself on that, uh-oh, it's going. <clears throat> it is by itself on that side of the equation, okay? So it has been isolated. Once we isolate, then we can do step two, which is to square both sides. Okay, um, so we are going to, I'm going to do this in a different color so you can see where I've been. We're going to take this and we're going to square it and we're going to take the right side and we're going to square it, right? Whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other. Golden rule of algebra. Um, so what we're left with then is 3x minus 2 equals 16. <coughs> From there, this should be the easiest problem you've ever done, right? This looks like Algebra 1, Day 1. Um, we are going to add 2. We get 3x equals 18, divide by 3, so x is 6, okay? Um, my recommendation on this is if you're not sure, check it. Plug it back in. So go back up to our original, put a 6 in there. 3 times 6 is 18, 18 minus 2 is 16, the square root of 16 is 4, so basically we're saying 2 plus 4 equals 6. True story. So it checks out. Okay? Um, so yeah, you can always go back and check your work on those problems. How about this one? 2 times the square root of 5x plus 1 minus 12 equals 0. What do we got to do first? We got to isolate. So we're going to add the 12 first of all. So it's going to be 2 times the square root of 5x plus 1 equals 12. Now what? Divide by 2. We haven't isolated quite yet. So it's the square root of 5x plus 1 equals 6. Now what? Now you can square both sides, okay? So we want to get the radical out of there, so we square and we square, which means we get 5x plus 1 equals 36. Take away that 1. So 5x equals 35. Divide by 5. So x is 7. Okay? Um... Questions on that one? All right, how about this one? 
negative 10 plus the square root of 2x plus 1 equals negative 5. Okay, now in the past, we've talked about how if a radical equals a negative, what? There's no solution, right? Um, but that's not the case in this problem. Don't let this negative make you think, oh, no solution, because we haven't isolated yet, right? You can't check that unless you've isolated. Um, so we start with isolating by doing what? We got to add the 10. Okay, so this is the square root of 2x plus 1 equals 5, and now it's not a problem anymore. Right? So once you isolate, then you can determine, do we have a solution? Um, what do you do next? You square both sides. So square this, square that. We get 2x plus 1 equals 25. And then solve for your x. So take away 1 and divide by 2. And x will be 12. Okay? Far so good? Pretty easy, right? I feel like this stuff is not terrible. You remember to isolate. Okay. We are just a choir in here right now, huh? Second part, we are talking about rational exponents. Do you remember what it means to have rational exponents? We've talked about this in the last several days. A rational number is if you can write it as a fraction, right? So fraction exponents is essentially what we're working with here. All right. If I were to take the square root of x and tell you that that equals 6, okay, you could probably come up with what is the value of x for me right now. Can anyone tell me? 36, right? The square root of 36 is x. Sorry, 36 is x. Take the square root, you get 6. That's pretty simple, right? But sometimes it's not going to be that simple that we can figure out what our number is, so we need a new method. Um, so let's say we have something like this. x to the 3 halves equals 8, okay? So we're saying the square root of some number cubed equals 8, which is a lot to think about. So there's an easier way that we can solve it than having to like, okay, let's, if I do this and then I do that, like that's just a lot of work and it's difficult. Instead, what we're going to do is we are going to raise this to a power that makes this a very easy problem. Any guesses what power we could raise this to to make this a much simpler problem? Two-thirds. Good job. Um, if we raise it to the reciprocal, think about what happens there. If I raise this to the two-thirds power and this to the two-thirds power, this is 1, right? So now all of a sudden my problem is x equals 8 to the two-thirds power. Well, we know how to do 8 to the two-thirds power right? We are doing the cube root of 8 and squaring it. That one we know how to do. What's the cube root of 8? What's 2 squared? 4. Much easier problem than saying, oh, if I took the cube root and then I squared, what number would I get 8 from? Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to be raising things to the reciprocal. Um, so your two steps in this one Step one, you're going to isolate the power. So still isolating first. And then step two is we're going to raise both sides. To the reciprocal power. Okay, still a two step process. Um, we have three of these, and then we are done. Example two. All right, so first one looks like this. We have two times x plus two to the three halves power 
equals 54. Okay? Um, what do we do first? We have to isolate, so we're going to divide by 2 on both sides because we want just the power. So it's going to be x plus 2 to the 3 halves equals 27. Um, have we isolated at this point? Everything is taken to that power, right? So we have isolated. So now what do we do? We raise it to the power of the reciprocal, right? So we're going to raise this to, instead of 3 halves, the 2 thirds power is essentially what we're doing. Um, so we need to raise this to the 2 thirds power. This is 1, so we're left with just x plus 2 here. And then 27 to the 2 thirds power. Now, I don't know if you figured this out but I'm going to tell you now. You can do that really simply on here. Do you know how? You can literally plug in 27. Here, let's do this. If I go 27 and then carrot, and now you have to do parentheses so that the fraction works out, but to the 2 divided by 3 power... That's your answer. Not your answer to the problem, but 27 to the 2 thirds power. So technically, you can do this on your calculator without having to break it down the other way, um, which I'm fine with you doing that if you want. If you like to do it the other way, we're saying the cube root of 27, and we're squaring it, right? Well, the cube root of 27 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Okay? Um, so take away the 2 to finish off that problem x equals 7. Good? Letter B. What? Oh, yes, you can't see that anymore. I'm sorry. I do that every time. Where are we at? Here we go. Okay, letter B. We are doing 3 times x minus 1 to the 3 fifths power equals 24. What do we need to do to isolate? What? Divide by 3, right? We want to get the power by itself. So divide by 3, divide by 3. So I get x minus 1 to the 3 fifths power equals 8 on this one. Um, and then we take it to what? The 5 thirds, right? The reciprocal would be 5 thirds and 5 thirds, okay? Um, so this becomes just x minus 1. And then 8 to the 5 thirds, um, again, if you would like to break it down, it's the cube root of 8 taken to the fifth power, or you can just plug in 8 to the 5 thirds power. Um, is it 32? It's 32. So x minus 1 equals 32, and then we're just going to add 1. So x is 33. Okay? Last one. This one's a little bit unique. Um, I'll show you why in a minute. So you have 2 times x minus 2 to the 2 thirds power equals 50. All right, so to solve that, what do we do first? Divide by 2. So it's x minus 2 to the 2 thirds power is 25. Okay, then we need to take it to what power? 3 halves. Okay, so here's the deal on this one. <coughs> Everything else we've done so far has been a cube root. This is a square root. Remember when we said, what's the square root of 16? What was your answer? Was it just 4? Plus or minus 4, right? This one is a square root. When you square root, you're going to get two answers, okay? So you have to be careful on this. Um, what you get is x minus 2 equals, now again, 
plug that into your calculator, or if you would like to break it down, we're taking the square root of 25, and we're cubing it. What's the square root of 25 cubed? Plus or minus 125. Okay, so that's the only thing that's different about this one. When you're square rooting, you got to do the plus or minus. Um, so if this is the case, then we end up with, if we add 2 to both sides, x equals 2 plus or minus 125, right? So 2 plus 25 means x is going to be 127. 2 minus 125, x could be a negative 1. 23. Okay? Um, so if your base is even, remember we said an even root gets you two answers, just be careful with that. Okay? No, give me the two. Yeah, give me the two answers. Any questions on that? That's the whole thing. <laughs>